What we're looking at here that really gets me excited about grain as we go through harvest into winter and into first quarter of next year is the situation that's developed in Brazil. We have seen massive cuts to their corn crop in Brazil. Earlier this year, we knew that South Africa went through a tremendous drought. The South African corn crop was, was horrible. They're not a huge corn producer. But, you know, we're looking at 8 million metric tons. They're short. Where's that going to come from? Well, it's going to come from Argentina. Argentina, with their new tax policy, they've now got incentive to export a lot of corn. They're going to ship that corn to South Africa. Okay, you know, we're at a wash. We couple that with Brazil's massive losses in their second crop corn, their safrina corn. And where's Brazil going to get their corn? Brazil, some estimates are Brazil is going to be importing corn here before the end of this year. Where's that going to come from? Argentina's corn's going to South Africa. A lot of it. The rest of that Brazilian corn's going to have to come to the U.S. Brazil is very, very front-loaded on exports. They are going to run out of corn this year. So they are going to be buying a lot more corn from the United States a lot sooner than we had originally anticipated. When we're looking at those charts, those technical charts, and we're trying to find a fundamental reason for this thing to go up, there is a fundamental factor that's going to get priced into this market that down in these price levels, I don't believe it's priced in yet. China is sitting on massive piles of corn, right? We've talked about this. It's been a factor since they, they really replenished their supplies after 2012. They're sitting on a lot, but all indications are that they're not so great at storing corn. They really don't have that part of it figured out compared to the U.S. Uh, how many people have seen the photo of Chinese farmers drying corn on the six-lane highway? In, has anybody seen that picture? It's a fa I wish I had it here. Basically, these Chinese growers have harvested their corn. They've harvested it by hand. It's a little wet. They need to dry it. So they've moved on to these massive infrastructure expenses that are projects that China has worked on, namely these massive six, eight lane highways. And these Chinese farmers have occupied, you know, 30 foot of a lane, covered it in corn, and they're sitting there on lawn chairs drying their corn on these highways. <laughs> yeah, that's cheap drying. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've got a county blacktop in your neck of the woods and you're worried about cutting cost, I think we can learn a thing or two. Neighbors might object, though. But even once that corn leaves the farmer's hand and it gets into official Chinese supplies, there have been massive layoffs and restructuring in their, uh, their storage regime, which is all private companies owned by the state. It's a very complicated system. But what they found is that a lot of the corn under Chinese purview has gone bad. It's in terrible, terrible shape. And in addition to the South African drought, the Brazilian trouble with their second safrina crop, and most recently, massive floods happening in a lot of the cropland areas of China, just about 3 million acres have been flooded here recently, they are going to have to put up or shut up with their stocks. They continue to report these massive stockpiles of corn. This is the year when they're going to need to draw down those stockpiles that we as a world are going to find out if they're decent. My bet is they're not, broadly speaking. Their auctions have been terrible time after time when the Chinese government has tried to unload that corn. I think they're going to have to buy a pile of U.S. corn to blend with that terrible corn. So I think 2016, fourth quarter, 2017 is going to be an excellent year for U.S. corn exports, assuming the dollar doesn't spike to new crazy highs. And even if it does, these are countries that need to eat.